Now I run its diesel time. This will be especially important for our German viewers or in general the European viewers because you know I've told you already the US customers or in China will mostly go for the petrol engine then with taxation Tesla customers which have um, tax advantages in their countries will probably go for the hybrid. Now there's the diesel here. This is actually the momentum trim level, so we have the middle trim level here now. We can compare it to the inscription trim level and we also got another color. This is the sand color here. So if you want to prefer that one, I also want to know your opinion about this color. We've shown you the white one, the gray one, and now this sand color here. Which one do you like best from these ones so far? I would always go for a blue car, of course. We haven't seen one uh, so far, but maybe we'll do it in a test car later this year with the blue one. Maybe. Let's see. So uh, just from design, from the momentum trim level here now, I must say, well, it's just such a beautiful car and it doesn't really matter so much if you have the inscription level for the exterior. Of course, you have some chrome layer here and there additional. For example, here at the side profile we see, we don't have this inscription chrome layer at the lower part, but you know, I don't care so much. Here we also got the 20-inch uh, alloys, which are in this B-color design with the um, dark highlights on the inside. That was really massive alloy, even though if we're here now in the momentum trim level. But in general, I must say, what do you think? I would also go for it in a momentum trim level. There will also be this kinetic entry trim level, um, but I think even the entry level will be very beautiful. So. I think you can't make this car ugly at any time if you pick a low trim level. But what is very interesting is when we took a look at the interior now, because this one is actually quite different, but maybe even more beautiful. So, Illumino sand on the outside and also sand color on the inside. And just color wise, this is my absolute favorite. We do not have some inscription trim level features here now, but I think just from design, I don't really care if it's inscription or momentum here. I really love the colors that I used right here. You see, everything is covered here in the bright leather style. Um, well, you know, I'm also a fan of Alcantara, so I would also prefer having Alcantara even here. But just from the color, I think it's very, very beautiful. And well, in combination with the white car, the brown looked better, of course, because you have the contrast here. But in this case, or if you also maybe go for a blue car, I think I would always go for that one because that really also fits to this car and fits to Volvo to have a very bright interior. Also, again, in comparison together, let's say together with the panoramic roof. By the way, I can also open the panoramic roof for you once. Um, so it's not only a panoramic roof that goes from um, up till the rear, you can also open it with a button up here. By the way, all of the buttons, they are not matte, they are kind of shiny and black, so also high class used here. And then you can first open it to the, let's say, first level even more light in and then you can even push it back a little further. 90% of the all-new Volvo XC90 have been created all new but there's one feature that has been carried over from the old one or from other Volvos and that is the integrated child seat. We didn't have it in the inscription trim level. I think it's just optional but still it's available let's say it and if you can put the lash up here and push it up and then you have an integrated child seat so um, very practical feature for families that you don't need an additional child seat here for the middle seat and of course there's a complete seat belt here as well and in the front great wooden structure it is real wood real Swedish wood and it's also not you know has not does not this shiny surface where you also see the fingerprints it's really a matte wood surface so it really feels natural 
And also the sliding processes here all feel premium alike. You know, maybe from our Range Rover video that's, that there was a big fail in that sliding process. You can check it out as well here, yeah, Auto Fuel Range Rover video. And then also these bright colors are used right here. That is just so amazing. What is very good is that the dashboard is still black because if the dashboard would be also in that bright color, um, you would have gotten reflections from the window and that's not that good. And my absolute favorite is here the steering wheel design because you have this contrast inside the steering wheel, outside with black and inside bright again. And I must say the rather cheap airbag cover also looks better in that bright color. So. If you ask me, I would definitely go for this exact interior, not because it's inscription or momentum or whatever, because it's this bright together with the wood. That's my absolute favorite. What about you? And then let me show you a feature of the trunk I didn't show you before. It's that opening with the foot. We haven't seen it um, in Volvos before, but in other brands. So if you have the key in your pocket, you can wave with your foot on the left side. Okay, that was blocked now because I was standing behind it. Let's see if it closes again. Okay. A little bit of fail. I can also close and open it with the key. So, closing again. Let's try one more time. But you know, that's how it is, everyday life. You know, I'm coming with all my shopping bags. There we go. And then we can take a look at the trunk again here. So it doesn't differ from the upper trim. You can just pull it up so it moves back. Then you see we got that huge trunk again. We don't have, um, actually I can, I can show you, we don't have such a beautiful car for this one here. But still, you know, I don't think you really get the difference. Um, so I can just recommend the momentum trim level really. The basic trim level, um, hardly anyone picks up nowadays because you want to have certain features in always. And um, I think the momentum trimmer will be a very good choice for this car. Let's close again with the foot. Hello. Sensor. <laughs> I think I'll maybe just go with the key or press the button here. Ta -da. First of all, well, it's quite silent. You hear it from the outside, of course, it's a diesel. From the inside, you don't hear it that much that it's a diesel, actually. Okay, let me slow the bump here now. Again, the basic feeling of the car is, of course, the same. And this one is very relevant now for our German viewers because they will go for the diesel, definitely even cheaper than the petrol engine. So when you're just going at slow speeds here in the round corners, you don't feel such a difference actually because the engine remains silent and at low speeds it doesn't make such a difference, I must say. Um, maybe at low speeds, I even think that the diesel maybe even sounds a little bit better than the petrol engine, I'm not sure. Also good acceleration if we're just at low speeds, that's perfectly fine. Now if we accelerate from just from O, push it a little bit down. Yeah, you do have actually a lot of power, you know, these turbo diesels, they produce a lot of torque. So that's, that's really fine, you won't lack any power here. Um, however, if you push it down, you realize, well, that's it's kind of one second the diesel still needs until this turbo sets in. Of course, the petrol engine has also a turbo, but you know, that's kind of the basic difference. The petrol engine is a little bit more explosive. I think you can really have a stabbing up here. So the diesel, petrol, and then the hybrid, just, you know, with an increasing power level. So the hybrid just really almost feel like a sports car when you push down the throttle. And the diesel is more for this relaxed style. But still, when you're on the motorway, you will have enough power also to accelerate. It's not that kind of explosive power, um, but still you'll be just fine. Um, the consumption for the petrol engine will be around, I think, 11 or maybe even 12 liters on 100 kilometers, and that's quite a lot. 
We like to see on how the diesel behaves when we have a little bit longer of the road. This will also be very interesting, but in general I can really recommend the diesel, especially for example in Germany it's um, well, less expensive. But of course our Chinese or American friends, they will rather go for the petrol engine, as I said before. Now we can also test some off-road driving. If we pick our drive mode selector here in the front again, we got the optional air suspension in that car as well. I can just recommend it because it adds so much to the comfort. And then we can go to off-road. So then we get a little bit higher, four centimeters higher. Um, the comfort is not increased when you put the suspension up, but it's just that you have more ground clearance and it's safer to go off. Uh, got a little bit of sand here at the beach now. And of course, the all new Volvo XC90 is also fully off-road capable. And um, so the all-wheel drive also does not have any problems with sandy. Even if we got some deep sand ruts here now, you're feeling it. The all-wheel drive is working. Don't put the throttle too much down if we want to accelerate out very fast. Even if you shouldn't do that off-road just for testing here now, it also works pretty fine. So if you maybe on a ranch or something like that, or uh, maybe are in the home country of Sweden or something, then you'll also be fine with the off-road features of the all new XC90. It's um, really very comfortable still off-road, uh, of course. Also when you go in these ruts and the air suspension is just superb for this. So if we go off the road here on purpose now for fun or for testing, that's fine. But usually you do not want to get off the road with that car if you're just on the normal street. And that brings us to the runoff road protection and in general to the safety features of the all new Volvo XC90. Volvo says we are the brand that offers the best safety features and well, partially that's also really true. It's a, something like a core feature of the brand. So far, all the Volvo models had the City Emergency Braking Assistant from Siri Production that was working for cars that was driving in front of you. Then there was optional that the car also realizes, okay, is there any, um, any people running around there or maybe cyclists? But that was optional. Now in the all new Volvo XC90, this is all included. So you got this Emergency Braking Assistant and which is also recognizing, you know, any people running on the street or also the cyclists. And this one is reducing these small accidents inside the city, which can, you know, for the guy inside the car, not so, um, you know, not so relevant for injuries, but of course for costs, but even more relevant for people running around or for example, for the cyclists. And these kind of accidents are reduced by 30% by this system. And it comes from seed reduction, you know, with I think it's the most important factor because there can be so many security systems, but they don't help when they're not from zero production, but because not everyone is taking them. So this one is step one here now, and then there are of course also additional features. But before we talk about that, let's, let me show you that here in the front grille, we don't see the sensor anymore. We just have the front camera from the 360 degrees camera system, but the sensor well, would be like big black shiny element here. We, for example, see in the XC60, moved up here now, to the window because they could then pick a more expensive system here because here it's well well protected because if if you have still if you have the system and do have an accident in the front the run uh, run on accident then this system would get damaged here if it sits in the front the sensor here it's protected and so you can use a even more expensive system for that and that one is uh, also for this the sensor for the emergency braking assistant what else is there? From CEO production there comes this run of road protection and I can show you some footage from there, some animation which is very exciting. 
because this run off uh, road protection realizes when the car is going off the road and then, for example, tightens the seat belt, also tightens the seat itself, that you don't get, for example, so much uh, whiplash. And in general, the passenger is kept tight inside the seat, so um, you don't move around that much, and that protects you when the car is running off the road. So, really interesting feature here from Volvo, and that is also from CEO Production. Then again, there are even more optional safety features. For example, the blind spot sensor we know, the great um, automatic cruise control, and also a lane departure warner that you don't run off the road in the first place. There are also very interesting crash test footage I want to show you again. Some of them I've already shown you in earlier reviews. There are some new footage available here, um, here now as well. So I want to show you that as well because it's also very impressive how they test the car and especially also this runoff road protection.
So the Volvo strategy is we implement even more safety systems optionally and those that are a little bit older come inclusive from C reproduction then and so step by step even more security systems are inside the C reproduction and that will ultimately lead to the goal of Volvo. They say by 2020 we want to have no one killed or seriously injured in a Volvo car. I think this year with the Orno XC90 and including even more assistance system in the C reproduction, I think it's the first step towards that. So, and finally, let me conclude about the all-new Volvo XC90. There was and still is so much to say about this car. Really crucial car for the brand itself, and this will lead the brand into the future. I must say, to be honest, I lost the typical Volvo feeling so far. I wouldn't say this is a classical Volvo, but that's not a bad sign, because this one de uh, defines a new Volvo feeling. We still got the basic features a Volvo offers, for example um, the stressing of the safety features and the very superb comfortable seats and the great suspension which has been rebuilt here from all new on. But we don't have this classical Volvo feeling. This one is really a new Volvo feeling, it's a little bit more directer Volvo feeling, the steering is more direct, the car even though it's that big drives more sporty than any other Volvo in my opinion. So they really did a great job there. Also the whole new interior has been refined and we got an even more exclusive atmosphere. Um, you know, there were just some parts, for example, the buttons at the steering wheel we didn't like, but these ones are rather minor failures. Overall, it's really high class and it's more exclusive and more emotional than we, for example, see at the moment from Audi, BMW or Mercedes. So this one will attract a lot of new customers also from the other premium brands. Just from the exterior, I must say, from design, this is really my favorite SUV of all time, in my opinion. And just from driving, I said it earlier in the driving experience, it really feels like a smaller car, so you don't really feel that it's such a huge car and if you got the camera systems you'll also be fine with parking the car. However, it is still a huge car and um, it will not fit in any parking lot of course. But overall if you want an SUV of that size, at the moment I can just conclude it's maybe the best pick so far here at all on the market. It's not the most sporty one of course, then you have to pick a Porsche Cayenne, but just from the comfortable ride and all the features and just all the, the feeling together, you know, how you feel at home in this car. This is really superb. So, thank you again for watching Autogefühl. I want to hear your opinions on that car, on the exterior, interior, and also what you took from the driving impressions. Um, maybe just um, a small hint at the end which engine you should pick when you pick the car. You know there will be later on a um, smaller petrol engine and also a smaller diesel engine. The smaller diesel engine also will come only with front wheel drive to save some more costs, to have a low entry price. Even though we're just with the front wheel drive, you'll be just fine. You just need the off-road um, all-wheel drive when you go off-road really quite, quite a lot. Otherwise, you don't really need it. It just depends on your region where you're actually in. I would go for the diesel just to have a low entry price actually and if I would be in a market where I get um, these tax benefits I would go for the hybrid because no matter of the cost the hybrid is my favorite. So silent, no sound when you're going at sl uh, slow speeds and it really helps the petrol engine and you get the great boost and of course you can do something for the environment if you just plug it in and then maybe go some ways all electric then if you have the possibility of charging the car at your maybe of your home garage or something that way in front of your house that would be very practical so my pick would be like i think 
this exact it's the interior I'm, I'm showing you. Um, it can be momentum equipment. I don't care actually um, that much. Um, the R design is of course very spectacular, but you know I think it doesn't fit so much to the car. This wooden style, bright interior. I think it really fits more to that car. And then I would also go for the hybrid and try to charge it as often as I can do. If I more look um, towards the money and don't have these tax benefits in my, in, in my market, I would probably go for the diesel, pick the car exactly as it stands here right now. Um, I think I will maybe have to pay something about 60 to 70 thousand euros for that now. Um, but I would just go for the blue exterior color, even though sand with sand is quite impressive here now as well. So, and that's now with the conclusion. You see, there was so much to say about this car because so much is new and it's um, maybe, I think, the most important review of the year um, because there are, of course, other generations from other cars, but this one is a really a big step forward here for Volvo to, towards a new Volvo feeling. Thank you very much for watching again. Looking forward to your comments now. This is Thomas for Autogefühl. Bye.